so in today's video I'm going to be talking about A Good House for Children by Kate Collins and in this book review I'm going to be doing it in two parts. The reason being I have a theory about this book but I feel like it could potentially, as I'm explaining this theory, it could potentially have some spoilers in it for other people. So if you don't want to know those spoilers, I will let you know when I get to that part and you can click off of the video. But to begin with, I'm just going to give you a general overview. Um, I'm not sure whether I would rate this book a 4 or a 5 star. The reason why I would probably give it a four star and not a five star is because this is very much a slow burn. Well actually this book has several things in it that I don't normally like in other stories but the storyline in this was so intriguing it kept me hooked. So to begin with it's dual perspective story you're jumping back and forth in time between two different families and normally in stories I don't like that I like one linear um, narration throughout the whole thing you know I don't like to jump back and forth between different characters because for me personally I feel like it breaks up the flow of the story um, but this I feel like this book did it well enough that it wasn't too distracting jumping back and forth although a couple of times I did have to remind myself which family I was reading about um, because they're both quite similar it both both of the storylines in this follow uh, mothers and well one's well kind of because like one's a nanny and one's a mother but there is mothers in both of them and the children aren't that different in both stories so I kept having to remind myself which family I was reading the one in present or the one in the past um but oh the book's gone a bit blurry so about that but um yeah it kind of gelled well enough that it didn't bother me too much um and there's a reason why they did it that way, which I'll explain in the second part. But, yeah, it's going to be a difficult book to try and describe. Um, so basically, I'm going to go with, it's a story of isolation, almost. Like, haunting isolation mixed with grief. So, it's set in this really remote house. It's like some kind of manor house up on this cliff top like in the middle of nowhere in this very small little village and both families moved to this house trying to start afresh within their family. Stuff's going on in their family lives and they're finding it a bit stressful and they find this big beautiful house and they're like okay I'm gonna escape from my life and go off to this big beautiful house and we're gonna live this beautiful like country life dream in this manner and it's gonna be very idealistic and very peaceful and we're just gonna have a lovely family life in this house. However things obviously don't go to plan it's very isolating and um, both families are going through like I said difficult family situations um you know one family is going through grief and loss and another family is going through um a mother who is trying to raise her children but having difficulties one of her children has um selective mutism which is really interesting to read about and She's very close with her children, but she's a little bit separate from her husband. So, yeah, they're both going through different situations, but similar sort of vibes between both of the families in past and present. And, like I said, it's a slow burn, so it's slow going. And as they arrive at this house, obviously they're very hopeful. They have, like I said, they're going to have this amazing new house. And it's going to be, everything's going to be great now they've moved here. And as it goes on, more and more creepy things start to happen. And it's along the same vein of, you're like, okay, are these creepy things happening because this house is haunted and it's an old house and, you know, creepy stuff happens in old houses and has a reputation for being a bit creepy? Or is it the women in these books? They're very overwhelmed. They're very stressed out. They're obviously struggling in day-to-day -day life. Um, managing the house and the children are they slowly kind of slipping into some kind of madness and it's affecting them um that way like is it just because they're isolated and they're having poor mental health or is there actually something sinister happening in this house because 
as the book slowly goes along it's like a slow descent into madness um for both families and the way it's written it's almost like it's happening at the same time but it's not because obviously one's in the past and one's more in the present and yeah it was just really really interesting as it got closer towards the end there were some moments where it got a little bit confusing and you're like okay i'm not really sure exactly what's happening here which is interesting because the characters in the book are also going through this they don't understand what's happening in the house they don't know why they're seeing what they're seeing or hearing stuff that they're hearing or you know what's happening and yeah it's kind of like you feel a little bit unraveled the closer you get towards the ending of the book which i think is quite clever because obviously that's what the characters are feeling and then you start feeling that like wait what's happening in the story um which i think could be frustrating for some readers if you're someone who likes very clear cut this 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 is then happening and then a very conclusive ending where everything kind of wraps up nicely you're not gonna like this book um i do feel like the ending is one of those endings where it leaves a little bit to interpretation and like i said i will get into my interpretation towards the end of this video um but yeah so it was definitely a very interesting read very much a slow burn um so it's not going to be for everyone it's not like it's not like one of those haunted house books where you read where it's like jump scary and like really big shocking stuff's happening like i said it's more of a slow unraveling so yeah it's gonna be for some people and not for other people i was surprised i actually liked this book i kind of after i finished it the day after i was thinking about it i was like this is why i don't know whether it'd be a four or five star i think i'm gonna settle on a four star i think it, if it had been a little far more quick in its pacing i would have liked it would have been a five star for me um but then the slow burn really fit the kind of story that it is I feel like if it had been a faster place it might have lost some of the atmosphere around the book and there was lots of things in this book that um i liked the writing the way it was written and the way the character development was and the way the characters described their feelings it felt very real like the characters in this book felt real like their perspective perspectives on things it felt really solid which is why it was so unsettling when it started to slowly unravel it was just a very interesting book so yeah if you like fast paced fast action real horror stories then i'd probably say this one wouldn't be for you but if, it, but if you're into slow burn almost like psychological maybe like psychological horror i would say this is um then i think maybe give it a go because it might be for you i was in a pretty bad reading rut when i started reading this book i was struggling to pick up anything to read to be honest this took me about two weeks to finish it was during the easter holidays and yeah i was just very busy with work and my son and i wanted something to read in between the busy moments and this seemed to fit the bill quite nicely i took my time with it but i didn't get bored with it which is a thing i often find if books are too slow and i'm reading it at a slower pace i can very often get bored of books and then just put them down and never pick them up again and move on to the next thing because i'm very much a mood reader um but this one held my interest um yeah i would say i very much enjoyed it and i would be interested in picking up more by this author so if you don't want to know what my theory is with this book then thank you for watching um i appreciate it and i will see you in the next video um so for those of you who are left i'm going to tell you the theory behind this book so it's kind of described as a haunted house book so now I'm going into more spoilery stuff. So if you don't want any spoilers, you don't want to know anything about more in depth into this storyline, like I said, click off now. But basically, yeah, it's described as kind of a haunted house story, but I actually wouldn't say it is a haunted house story. My theory is with this, things are happening in both storyline, in both timelines. So it's set between the early 2000s it is 2017 it's set 
let me just find the exact date 2018 so the chapters are titled by the year so it's 2000, 2017 to 2018 is the um the modern day family so Orla's family and then it's set in the 1970s i believe is the family in the past let me just double check that yeah 1976 um is lydia's timeline and lydia is a nanny of a family she's looking after um these children for a grieving mother and different things are happening with the timelines but as the story goes on the things both the women are seeing, Orla and Lydia, they seem to be correlating with each other's story. And then in the modern day, in the 2018 storyline with Orla, she is starts seeing and hearing things and then things are getting misplaced and turning up in the like in the past and then I don't know how to describe it without giving way too much away. But basically what I think is, within this house, it's not haunted, but there's some kind of time loop within the house. And they're actually affecting each other's realities. I think that's where this book is going. Because Orla starts talking about, she's an artist, and she starts talking about um, like holes in reality. And... There's this very specific scene, scene where she misplaces something and then it randomly turns up on the other timeline of the other family. And that's when it really hit me that, that it's like, oh, it's not haunted. There's some kind of time lapse going on in this house where everybody's timelines are getting mixed up and jumbled up. And the things that they are see seeing and hearing are each other it's like each other's timelines are getting jumbled up which i think is really interesting because i've spoken i've like theorized about this before like me and my husband speak about different theories surrounding ghosts and what ghosts could be and this and that and i we've actually talked, spoken about this before where it's like it could be you're just seeing either another reality or into another timeline and it's not actually a ghost it's just apparitions of other timelines and somewhere along the way they've got merged together and i think it's a really interesting theory and it was probably the last i just don't know like last four or five chapters where this really came together and there is obviously madness to play in it it is obviously still um turning both families a little bit strange because obviously they don't understand what they're seeing and it's getting weirder and weirder and it's kind of turning them mad but yeah i don't think it's hauntings i think it's a mix up in timelines and it's not 100 percent clear like the book doesn't outright state that's what's happening it just kind of hints because for a ghost story it doesn't really hint what's happening with the ghosts either because there are a lot of deaths in this house so you're like okay is it a haunted house and it's been haunted by the deaths of the people that have happened in this house or is it holes in time and they're experiencing things in each other's time or altering each other's uh, realities within different time zones does that make sense um i kind of know where it's difficult to explain because i've got it in my mind how like of what i think is happening but in trying to explain that was quite difficult it's quite a complicated theory um, like I said, I started tabbing when, thing, tabbing when things were happening, like major things, and I was like, hang on a minute, is that, are they seeing this other person, or, you know, it's a strange one, I'd be really interested to see other people's theories on this, um, it seems to have a pretty good rating on Goodreads, a pretty average rating, but I've not seen anybody do an outright review on this book yet, so I would be interested to see other people's perspective. And that's what kept me hooked. I really wanted to figure out, was it this timeline thing or was it not? I don't know if this book is supposed to be left up to interpretation or it definitely does have a definitive ending that you're supposed to figure out. I might have to read it one more time just to go through now that I have that theory in my mind 
to think of that as I'm reading it through from the beginning and see if I can find more links between the timelines. Um, because yeah, that that's what it seems to be for me. Let me know if you have read it and you think the same or do you think it's just a haunted house where people have died and they're now haunting um, the next family and it's turning that family crazy um, or do you agree with my theory? Do you think it's some kind of time loop um, or holes in time or holes in reality within this house? It's all very interesting so yeah that's my theory if you've stayed to the end of this video then thank you i know it was a little bit all over the place let me know your thoughts um have you read this book what are your thoughts on it it says here on the back see some some people it's described as like a feminist gothic novel um atmospheric and beautiful which definitely is very atmospheric and then it says a terrifying ghost story but then the daily mail has blurbed it as being a psychological thriller so is it a psychological thriller or is it a haunted house story or is it both i'm not really sure um invokes shirley jackson's writing i would agree with that actually because shirley jackson's writing has that very creepy atmospheric feel and this book definitely had that i would definitely be interested in picking up more by this author um but yeah let me know your thoughts are you interested in reading this book have you read it what do you think so yeah that's everything i have to say about this book let me know your thoughts and as always thank you for watching and until next time bye guys